all right, teacup, you just learn your lines and hit your marks and that's it. I'm already upstaged by a box of files. No, 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 sorry, Boxy, I didn't mean that. You're the star, I'm the sidekick, I'm fine with that. Really, I am. Don't you be a diva with me. You're just a piece of cardboard from Office Max. Never mind, it's showtime, it's showtime. Places, everyone, Boxy, teacup. Ready, steady, three, two. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Tea and Biscuits and Murder. I'm your host, not Dr. Alan Campbell. And this is Boxy. Say hello, Boxy. Our subject, as always, is Dr. George Ill O'Dell Jr. Serial killer, evil genius, criminal mastermind, and all round bad egg. Boxy here is the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Files on the Black Dahlia case, aren't you, Boxy? Uh -huh. Now, Boxy, Boxy, I received a note. Oh, it's to you. It says, Dear Boxy and not Dr. Alan Campbell, are there any cat pictures in the Black Dahlia Files? Uh -huh. Yours very truly, where's Luigi, the guy who put the D in DNA? Well, very well, but please don't do your imitation of John Houston. Thank you, I think. Where is Luigi? Now, as it so happens, where is Luigi? There is a picture of a cat, or reference to a picture of a cat, with Dr. George Ill O'Dell Jr. It's in Lieutenant Frank B. Jemison's interview with Dorothy O'Dell. That's George O'Dell's ex-wife, and Steve Hodell's dad. Shall we show them, Moxie? Uh -huh. All right, we shall. All right, Moxie. Let's see what we have here. Oh, George Bagos, John Egger, William Fowler, Richard Gall, Ernest Glazer, Robert Granis, getting close, Mark Hansen. Dorothy Hotel. Well, as it so happens, where is Luigi? Here we have the file. I hope this is going to answer your question. Ready? Uh -huh. Statement of Dorothy Harvey Odell, taken at 410 Santa Monica Pier, Santa Monica by Lieutenant Frank B. Jemison at 12.15 p.m. on March 22, 1950. Such a precise man. Questions by Lieutenant Jemison. Reported by Dora A. Perry Show. What is your full name? Dorothy Harvey O'Dell. What is your present address at the present time? 410 Santa Monica Pier. What is your phone number here? I don't have a phone. There is a fishing renting place downstairs, SM42421. What is your present occupation? Housewife. Boxy. Visit Steve Hodel says mom was a screenwriter and script doctor. Uh -huh. Let, let's read that again. What is your present occupation? Housewife. I do a little writing, but I'm not working at the present time. Were you formerly married to Dr. George O'Dell? Yes. Are you now divorced from him? Yes. How long have you been divorced from him? The interlocutory decree, the interlocutory decree was in 1944, and the final was in 1945. Five? Wait a minute, wait a minute, Boxy. <laughs> the interlocutory decree was in 1944. Final divorce was in 45, but Steve Hodel, oh dear. There goes Steve Hodel's high timeline all to hell. Do you have any children from him? Yes, I have three boys. Yes, that's Steve and his two brothers. Are you acquainted with Tamara Hodel? Yes. And is Dr. George Hotel the father of Tamara? Yes. Are you acquainted with her mother? 
Yes. What is her name? Dorothy. Where is she living now? What city? I believe San Francisco, but I'm not sure. You are familiar, are you, with the trial that Dr. Hodel just went through in connection with Tamara? I know about it, but I didn't attend it. Do you know Lillian Lenorak? Yes, I do. When did you first become acquainted with her? About what year? I think it was about 1940. Let me see, uh, say 46. I'm not really sure. When did you last see her? Just before she went to Camarillo and just before her mother came for her. Anyway, after she was ill over there at George's. Do you know her mother? No. When you last saw her, did you feel that she was a mental case? Is that your information? I felt she must be. The poor little boy was running around and very distressed. Poor little kid. I will now show you a photograph of Beth Short, Santa Barbara number 11419, and ask you whether or not you have ever seen that young lady in your life. No, I never have. Did you have a conversation with Dr. Hodel about the murder of Beth Short? <coughs> <coughs> Boxy, the dust. Did you have a conversation with Dr. Hodel about the murder of Beth Short? No, unless we mentioned it when it was in the papers, but I don't like to read about things like that. I can't say for sure that I have never mentioned her name to him, but it may have been in passing. Did he ever tell you, they can't pin that murder on me? <clears throat> no, to the best of my knowledge, he didn't, and he doesn't know her. On or about the date of her murder, January 15th, 1947, do you remember being out until four in the morning with George O'Dell and coming in slightly intoxicated? Now that's three years ago. Well, I think I explained before we never went on drinking parties because I don't drink, because of certain tendencies to drink too much. And particularly, if I were near him, I would not drink because from a medical point of view, he does not approve of my drinking, and I don't know that I understood that question. Well. The information that I have is that he was quite intoxicated himself and at that time, on that occasion, stated that they couldn't pin that Black Dahlia murder on him. No, no, that isn't true. Do you remember ever telling Tamar that? No. Did you ever tell Tamar that Dr. George Hodel was out the night before the murder with Beth Short at a party? No, I was living at my brother's house at the time we were not living in the same house i wouldn't know what he was doing hmm don't think that's what steve hodell says what was your brother's address at that time 2121 loma vista place has anybody ever told you that george hodell had beth short over to his home no nobody has ever told you that no, no one has ever told me that. For your information, her photograph has been identified by certain persons as resembling the young lady that was over to his house prior to the murder. You never heard anything about that? I never did. As a matter of fact, you are on quite a friendly relation, aren't you, with Dr. Hodel? We are friends. And at the time of his murder, which was so publicized, pardon me, and at the time of this murder, which was so publicized and made headlines in the newspapers at that time, weren't you on pretty friendly terms with him? We have always been on friendly terms. That was January 15th, 1947, three years and two months ago. I'm trying to relate it to when he got back from China. Was that before or after he got back from China? It was sometime after he got back from China. It was at a time when Dr. George Hodel had a medical clinic on East First Street near Central Avenue. He had the clinic for a long time before he left. Let's go back to the time. And do you remember at that time of Dr. Hodel having noon lunch or dinner at the Biltmore? No. Did you ever have lunch with Dr. Hodel at the Biltmore? I imagine so. 
Would you know it to be a fact that Dr. Hodel did eat lunch or dinner on occasion at the Biltmore? He has taken me to lunch there once or twice, and we have had dinner there, perhaps. For your information, we know of other women that have had lunch with him at the Biltmore Hotel and dinner. It's a central location. There is further information that Dr. Hodel stayed at the Biltmore Hotel on a few occasions. Do you remember those? I believe when he was between apartments when they had that three-day law in effect. He stayed, I believe. I'm not sure. I think the Biltmore was among them. He made a tour of the hotels and stayed there three days in each while he was finding an apartment. You understand that a very serious crime has been committed here, and the district attorney would not like it if you were to withhold any information in connection with a murder of this type, and we would like to have you give us any and all information you may have in connection with this murder on the suspect, George Hodel. Is there anything you have to tell us? Tell us. I have nothing to tell you that would bear out any idea you may have that he did this. All I know is that he is not the sort of man that would be psychologically be the kind to do this. He has a fine record as a doctor and is a dedicated man. He has never had a fashionable practice. He could have had. He is a man that really cares about medicine, not of earning money. But it is incredible to me that he should be in any way connected with it. You know that Dr. Hodel has had practice with surgical tools. I know he has never practiced surgery. Uh oh. You know that Dr. Hodel has had practice with surgical tools. I know he has never practiced surgery. His branch of medicine is VD generally and administrative medicine. I show you Seraph's photograph B119364 and will ask you if you recognize that. Yes. Who is that? Dr. George Hodel. Now, in view of the fact that the district attorney's office is interested in contacting all persons that might know something about whether or not Dr. Hodel had anything to do with this murder, I now show you a photograph of a nude girl and ask you if you recognize who that girl is. In other words, we want to know her name and where we can contact her. There is something familiar about her face. I think she have, may have been some model or something. Would you say she is a colored girl or half Indian? Do you know? No. Would you know the photographer? Who, would you know who the photographer might be in connection with this picture? No. I show you another photograph of the same girl with a man. Do you recognize the man in that photograph? I would say that was Dr. Hodel. Do you know the person who owns the cat they are holding between them? No, I don't. All right, where is Luigi? There you go. Do you know the person who owns the cat that they are holding between them? No, I don't. In other words, I'm sincerely interested in contacting this girl for information. Oh, Frank Jimison, you don't care about the cat at all. No, I don't know her. I have seen her face. I have seen photographs that George has of her. Would you have any idea where we could find her? No. I show you the third picture, Dr. Hodel and the colored girl. Can't, you still can't place any person that might know where I can find her. No, I don't. I, I can't think. Did you ever hear Dr. Hodel say anything more about the details of this murder of Beth Short, about the body, or anything about it. No, I never heard him discuss it at all. Well, if you look back on the events that took place about the time of this murder, did you have any reason to suspect that Dr. Hodel might have had something to do with it? None whatever. Let me advise you that we do have information that he did associate with Beth Short, and as you know, the last place she was seen alive was at the Biltmore Hotel, the evening of January 9th, 1947. I didn't know that. You are positive at this time that you never met that girl. Very, very sure. What is the name of your attorney? Robert Butts. And what is his address? It's the Bank of America building at Hollywood and Ivar. I forget the number. 
Did he advise you to give a statement to the district attorney's office? Yes. He did request, however, that you get a copy of the statement. Is that right? That's right. And as I stated before, that's something the district attorney has never done in connection to giving copies to any witnesses at any time. I didn't know. Thank you, Boxy. Right back there. Well, where is Luigi? I hope that answers your question um, about Dr. Hodel and cat pictures. Too bad the rest of the interview contradicts Steve Hodel so much, especially about George Hodel not practicing surgery. Well, this is not Dr. Alan Campbell and Boxy saying, see you next time. No, I don't remember. It could have been Staples or Office Depot or Office Max. Anyway, we've been together a long time, wouldn't you say? No, I don't need ventriloquist lessons.